but he never made it into like television. Let me tell you why. Shecky Green, in my opinion, is probably where the word stalker came from. Milton Berle, stalker, puncher, killer, murderer. Go out there. If they, if they didn't get roars, they want to quit show business. They want their analysts. What am I? I didn't get a laugh for eight seconds. They were, that, that, that's, that's my kind of guy. Those are my kind of people that I grew up with. Jack Carter, so they pulled their hair out. I, 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 I killed them. And with my psychiatrist. And you didn't laugh, I'll kill you. I'm going to go to your psychiatrist. Go, and, 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 and wonderful. But when they got off the stage, all they heard was church music. They didn't enjoy what they just did. Jack, Jack Carter said, they didn't stand up for me. They were going home. You just did two hours. They got to go home. Somebody had to go to the bathroom here. Are you crazy? They loved you. Had to convince. They still did. They, they, they're not convinced. I'm great. I'm telling them as a fellow comedian, giants in my eyes. These guys, I mean, Jan Murray's and these guys. I mean, giants. Wonderful. You don't see that today. The trenches. There's no, no more trenches. Well, you know, somebody <clears> said uh, to me that when the Rat Pack was together and they used to do all those shows at the Sands, that... They did the same jokes over and over again, but people just wanted to go, men and women. They just wanted to go and rub up against them. want to be a part of that, a part of an oil painting. I, maybe I'm, can I put any better than that? That was an oil painting being painted in front of them. They say, we'll never, we'll never see this again. And a lot of things were waiting for mistakes. They wanted those mistakes, because the mistakes were, 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 were brought them into a, like a whole routine. They wanted the, the, the Dean to make a mistake. They wanted Frank to fall down. They wanted Sammy to say something out of the way. They wanted, oh, this is what they were looking for. Be, to be a part of that, because none of those people in that, in, in that audience had talent. And they associated, they said, oh, I was part of that. So now they think they are talented. I was part of that. I mean, guys were paying 1,000, 2,000. Matrix these were telling me, we bought houses on those shows. Houses. Today, you got to give the people money to come in. Today, they want to examine the comp. Here's a hit. The joke today says, you want to go see Joe Blow for nothing? Well, I don't like it. Don't go for nothing. Years ago, for nothing, they wouldn't want to see anybody. Because that's, oh, wow, for nothing. Not today, not a while out of my song. My television, I'm not too sure, I'm not too crazy. You know, the, too... the, the other thing that's so important <clears throat> to talk about with them is that the country, when they brought Sammy into the act, was very, very racially biased. A guy told me that they used to have people who would come to ringside tables just to heckle Sammy, and they wouldn't ask them to leave either. Did you ever see that stuff? I never saw that, but I heard about it. You know what? The worst thing to do is let make them leave. And may I tell you something from what I heard from the people, when I've worked the Sands, from the people, that eventually that, that, that rat pack won them over. That they felt like a bunch of jerks. Not only that, because 99% of the crowd is telling them you're wrong, what are you gonna say? Are you gonna keep pushing and pushing? They, be, that they became fans. Well, that's the whole thing, because you know these kids look at them and they go, oh, they're really politically incorrect, calling each other Dago. And what is, what are you, what, let me ask you, what do these young kids understand charisma? What do these kids understand that certain people can get away with the word Dago? And certain people can get away with the Jew, the word Jew. He says he's a Jew. Certain people laugh at some people say, I don't like the way you said that. Certain people can get away with a lot of things. Certain people can insult the Pope and nobody say nothing. Somebody says, here, I don't like the way the Pope's hat's on. You're dead, you're out of the business. Certain people get away with certain things. Some people commit murder walk. Some people you know, turn, turn around and rob a candy bottom in the chair. But don't you think they were doing that just to show people how stupid the whole thing was? Because you read all that stuff Sinatra wrote in 45. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why do we, why, why do we concerned about the color of his skin? Why not be concerned about what the man or woman can contribute to the society? Let's get along. Hey, you know, I, let me tell you the hypocrisy. People are anti-black, and every time I say, really, let me ask you a question. If your daughter's drowning in the ocean, and there's a black person there, the only one that can save her, you're gonna say they don't save her? You're a liar? You're a big fraud? How dare you? And they look at it, they don't know what to say. Well, it's my daughter. Oh, I see. Under your conditions, she's okay or she's okay. That's where you're wrong. And Frank brought that up too. Many times he would say, you know, we need them just for our purpose. I mean, you, you like Nat King Cole because he's saying unf unforgettable. But what about the human being? What about the, 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 the contribution he's going to leave for this world? Forever and ever and ever. And here the poor guy died. I think it was 40 years old from cancer. I mean, uh, what, what about, what, 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 oh, and I love these guys. I love, I love Louis Armstrong. I don't want to live with him, but I love him. Oh, what a shame. I happen to be very fortunate in my upbringing, and, and, and you know, my parents were very tough. My parents were, you know, I, I, I said it, I don't know if, if I said it when we're on camera. My father says, you know, why don't you die so we can take the land that you're standing on and give it to somebody who wants to go to work. It was that kind of thing. Today, that's called child abuse, you know. My father says, yeah, you, you're still alive. How come you're not working? And he invented bungee jumping, my father. He's, my, he said, Mama, throw him out of the window. There was no rope, you know. And uh, today, they, they, yeah, I'll take my father to court and do that. My father would take my, who, who to court? 
What? My father says it's a pleasure to kill you. What a pleasure to kill you, to strangle you. I love to strangle you. You know, and he would turn around and say, okay. Biting, biting? My mother thought I was a leg of lamb. My mother always says, where'd you come? You're late from school. Ow, 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 ow. And I never thought nothing about it. I go, she must love me. If she didn't bite me, she didn't love me. It's crazy today. <laughs> you, so, so when you're saying that you don't think that they enjoyed it after they got off stage. No. So, so, so your experience, being with them and on the scene, you don't think that the, the what they say, that like Frank and Dean and all of them were funny or off stage. No, let me tell you, everybody knew who they were when they got off stage. Everybody thought they were the star. You don't think someone's gonna say, well, he's bigger than me. You know, that ego thing was there also. Oh, sure, you know, everybody say, and if you analyze what I'm selling it now, it was always Frank. He got the little bit of edge of all of them. It was always Frank. They all wanted to hear what Frank had to say. And when Frank got up to do his set to sing, it was like, uh, Dean, they love Dean, but when Frank went on, I don't know, and again, not to be repetitious, I don't know, and I don't even know if he knew, but it was Frank. It's Frank's Rat Pack, he invented it. It's Frank, the guy who made President Kennedy, it was Frank. You know, well, all this Frank did it, Frank did it, Frank did it. And the guys were there burping in, they didn't do nothing the way they're giving the guy credit. You know, it's, 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 it boggles my mind. We got greatness, we got guys who are brain surgeons. Did you save that baby? Yes, I did. What happened? Not a baby can say, Dad, that mama, dad, that mama, you saved that kid? Yeah, nobody pays attention. But if Frank said, yeah, I'm glad the kid got, well, Frank cured the kid. Frank cured that kid, he just had a kid. That's people, I can't handle that. I go, are you stupid? You shooting me false down like everybody else. Nah, 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 nah. But uh, now again, thank God we had him, and thank God we still have him, and uh, his music will live forever. There is no one, in my opinion, that would ever, ever sing like this man again. He went through, he went through the Harry James, the Tommy Dorsey, the Columbia years. He went through his own, uh, his own Capitol years. He went through Capitol, reprise. I have them all, ladies and gentlemen. I have them all. And I tell you, he got better, 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 better. Even with the duets, which was one of my greatest albums, there was something about him that you only listened to him. Well, sure, you know what the musicians <clears throat> say? For a guy who was a two-octave singer, yeah. what did he have? It wasn't, as you say, there were a lot better singers. Oh, yeah. And he said it. He said, Tony Bennett was the greatest singer on the planet. You know, that's okay. So Tony still walks around and says, Frank said it, Frank said he's the greatest thing on the planet. And I say, fine. Right. I don't agree with you, Tony. I love you. I think well, Matt Monroe and Vic Damone were the greatest singers. Jeannie says, because he always sang from Mama. And he has Who? Frank. That's what Jeannie uh, Trevelli says. She says, Fidelity, Fidelity. Fidelity. She says, Frank and his mother. That was the love of his Oh, yeah, life. but Frank never sang an Italian song. If he did, I think he sang one time with the worst thing in the world. He tried to sing Sorrento. The boats were sinking in Venice, you know, because it didn't happen. Then when he did that thing with Dagmar, dogs don't bark, I want to throw myself out the window. But in those days, he needed the money. In fact, the dog almost became a bigger star. They wanted to know the name of the dog. In fact, the, the environmental people wanted to know if they were abusing the dog, you know. <laughs> so the, look what he went through, that the dog got the credit. Well, you know, there is one thing. <laughs> That I got, that I know is right. Because Nancy is always saying to me, "Oh, they're always talking about my dad and my mom. I'm so sick of this." You know, he was never part of that. The thing is that he really wasn't. He wasn't. A, he wasn't a gangster. But you know, some of the mob people came out of the way, went to the Copacabana. They sat in front. They liked the guy. Again, he made those guys squirm. If he, if, if the wise guy knew that Frank was mad, they went, "She, can you can, can call him?" I didn't. I hope. What did I do, sir? Frank, what's he? They'd have killed for this man. They'd have absolutely killed for this man. And but, because, go ahead. but meanwhile, Frank and Dean look at a guy like Skinny D'Amato and they want to be that in the movies. But they're not that in real life. Well, Dean was more connected, in my opinion, than was Frank. Dean in the Ohio and Steubenville, I mean, Dean went all the babangas, but he was a dice player, he was this, I mean, he played, he, he dealt cards. Dean was more, but Dean never got that, had, had that ambiance. Frank had it for some reason. And Frank was the weakest of all of them. You know, he only breached for one nostril at a time. I mean, that's how weak he was. But Dean was more or less a boxer, the stalker, but yet they looked to Frank to be protected. I've had guys say, if I'm in a, in, a, in a big fight, I want Frank to cover my back. I don't want Frank covering nothing. I want a blanket covering me to get out of town. What are you people, nuts? But that's the love they had, because everybody wanted to be Frank Sinatra and get up there and sing and have the woman fall down. An Italian thing. And here's an Italian thing with the finger. We lose this finger, we can't order. Uh, Nicky, give me another one, Joe. Give me another one. Say, that, that, that's an Italian thing. Was, was Sammy <clears throat> a tough guy? You told me about the no. dressing room. Oh, thing. yeah. I worked with Sammy at, in Reno. And um, 
And I, you know, you had to invite me to his to anybody's dressing room. I'd never walk in, you know. And and, and Sammy's used to working with, you know, comic. Hey, to walk in a dressing room. And about three or four days, Sammy's uh, a, 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 his conductor's wife knocked on my door. She says, I mean, Yeah, she said the conductor's wife. Uh, she said, uh, uh, Mr. Cooper. She says, What's the matter? Don't you like black people? And she said, I said, You know, I said, uh, what, what makes you? She said, What's the matter? Don't you come in and say hello to Sammy? I said, I said hello to Sammy. You know, every night I said, but uh, I'm not invited. I don't want to walk in the room. Maybe he's talking business. Oh, oh, she said, you, we have to invite you. I said, absolutely. That's where I came from. That's my respect for him. You don't just walk in and hang around. If he wants me to hang around, that's because I've been embarrassed before. And, 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 and Sinatra said to me and my wife when I worked with him, he said, meet me down the lounge. I went down the lounge. There was no seat for me. I stood there like an idiot, and Frank never showed up. And I walked away, and I said, that'll never happen to me again. And I get very uptight about that because I have my dignity to worry about, and I have a character. So I, she says, all right, next night, Sammy knocks on my door and says, would you invite me in your room? <laughs> I said, come on in. And we sat down and we had a couple of laughs and uh, he was very nice to me and a great, again, I watched every show that, that, you know, that he did. And, uh, and I mean, his guy was, when he sat down, he was living fast. It was like he had a, he was like, uh, what else? Is, let me, let me, and he's the one that took everybody, everybody that worked in, in, at Harris to see Deep Throat. He rented out the movie at, at, at the local movie house. He goes, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're all going over to see Deep And then a couple of thousand, we all went to see Deep Throat. I said, I don't believe it. But that's the kind of guy he was. And we all walked out. Nobody got offended by it. We all laughed and we forgot about it. He was a very daring guy. Uh, one guy told me, uh, you know, that Sammy was more uh, popular with the women in Vegas than either Frank or Dean. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, he talked to them. <laughs> he said that Frank wouldn't even introduce them. You know, he'd be with some woman, he wouldn't even introduce her. Well, what Sammy, he Sammy would send a piece of jewelry. Sammy would turn and send flowers. All of a sudden, Sammy started to become Cary Grant. Sammy would do, you see, you know, there was sex and then there was sex. Sammy knew where to touch a woman mentally, where to touch her sexually. Sammy, that's what Sammy did. Frank and I, let's get it. To Frank, it was a side order. To Sammy Davis, it was a full order. You know, Sammy turned around, sent a piece of jewelry, go up there, a little violin, a little champagne. Sammy lived there because Sammy physically knew <laughs> If he wasn't Sammy Davis, this ain't gonna happen. But Frank was, oh, yeah, that was, it was all over for Frank. They, 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 were not, they wanted to get out of there. But not, he, uh, he saved it the moment. And what, what about Dean? What was he more like? I, 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 Dean, when I did Dean's show, the television show, what bothered me, you had to read every word on that card or Dean would stop the tape. Like if I says I was playing his barber. So, so Dean, uh, you think everything is okay? If I say, hey Dean, is everything all right? Stop! He didn't say okay, because now that's his cue. Because he read everything. And you know how embarrassing that is? But you had to do it. You had to do it. And he was not very friendly, Dean, would I get here. He, well, he'd walk in his dressing room and stay there until they called, Dean, you're ready, Greg Garrison. We'll call him, you're ready, and we'll come out. But he, I, I, I never got that camaraderie with him when I did this. Even when we did the roast. It wasn't, how you doing, Pat, how you doing? But I understood that. I, I wasn't offended by it, you know, and I just. Well, uh, I, Lou <clears throat> Brown, I said to Lou Brown once, Lou Brown said, like, at the end of the night with Martin and Rose, Dean would already have his shoes off. He'd be going up to bed. And Jerry would turn to the band and he'd say, let's swing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said Jerry was more... Excuse me a minute. Are, are they making noise in there? Patty! Yeah. Calm down. I can hear you. I can hear you. That's right. So we're cleaning fish here. We're still taping. He says... Uh, what do you think we're doing here? Finished. Well, this is only the, the, this is only Friday. Oh my God, you're doing an epic. <laughs> it is an epic. Oh, she's the... So he says. Uh, he, I said to Lou, I said, "Well, uh, what does that mean?" I said, did, did, "You mean Jerry got as many girls as Dean?" He said, "He said uh, he got as many, just not as good." <laughs> <laughs> well, Dean was more suave. Dean was more conservative. I, you know, Jerry was like, you know, Jerry's, you know, jumping up and down and uh, and it's very, you know, it, it amazed me how anyone would go with it. Because most girls who who have a feminine, they're feminine and they want to be touched and hugged. He, I would be scared if I was a girl of, of, of Jerry. He's able to get up and do April in Paris, you know. He's able to do Cagney while he's making love to you, you know. So there's no really romance. I would look at Jerry and Jerry. I love you, a genius, but I got to looking at Jerry. If I was a woman, I am. I don't want this guy in my bedroom. This guy's all, you know, he's like, he's like, he's like the, 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 the devoured bed before he even got to me, you know? So, uh, but, but Dean, I'm sure, was, you know, very well, quiet, very nice. Vicky Goldie, who grew up here in Atlantic City, 
her father took all the pictures of the five, photographs of the 500 Club. She said as a little kid, she remembers running down Atlantic City Beach, and there is Sammy with a white woman with the surf, you know, embracing this woman like from here to eternity. And she runs up and she goes, she goes, Sammy, Sammy, do Jerry. And she said, Sammy got up and in the middle of the beach started doing the imitation of Jerry Lewis. Hey, there so they, you go. You know, they had a lot of fun, right? I yeah. mean. Happiness. But it was yeah. happiness on the stage, and I don't think it was as, as happy off the stage as they would like you to believe. And I still believe everybody went into their own cabana after it was over, and everybody wanted to respect as an individual, and everybody there, they really didn't want to be a part of a group. They wanted to say, well, I'm still Sammy, because if you remember, all of a sudden, then Sammy would be at the sand by himself, then Dean would be himself. They all wanted their own, and in a way, they spoiled it. Because people say, uh, oh yeah, we saw Dean Martin last night, but he was funny with the Rat Pack. It became that kind of a thing. So what they became was their own enemy, in, 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 in a sense. Because they only did it for a few weeks. How long could they, you know, could, could they do this? Well, you know, Richard Gaven, when he wrote about Frank in 59 and 60, he said that it was all Frank's idea, and it was mainly because he couldn't sleep. He wanted all these guys that he could call up and say, we're flying to Vegas. You know, that... that that Frank needed those, those, he wanted those guys around. Power, it was power to him. He's a skinny guy. Again, I hate to repeat myself. He's a skinny guy. Everybody thought he's a killer. But he feels, no, but, but, but the company wanted, he wanted gingerillas. See, gingerillas are guys that, you know, they have scars just to look tough. They're not tough, but they look tough. Guys, give me a scar, I want to look tough. But they're not tough. So Frank felt tough by being around these guys. But I think Frank alone wasn't tough. I think he'd have a problem with it, you see. What when he's with a crowd and somebody stood up to him, there were nine guys there. Frank would say, I'll tell you, I try to hit the one. Well, look, he started the thing with John Wayne. John Wayne punched him in the jaw. John Wayne didn't care if he had 90. He started the thing with Colin in the, in the, when the guy knocked his teeth out. Well, well and, and one of the nicest, Carl Cohn was one of the finest gentlemen of the sand, of gentlemen's gentlemen. You don't play with a guy like that. And Frank knew it. Frank knew it. When he belted Frank, you didn't see any repercussions. You didn't see anything. Right? Because, you know, one phone call and uh, the big trouble. He backed off, lost the two, beep, went to seizures. That's all. Right. See? If it was anybody else, they would have heard him. But it was Frank. It was okay. And Carl Cohn, gentlemen. And then, you know, in fact, Pat Henry made a statement. If I was there, it wouldn't happen. And Carl Cohn the next day called him up and said, if you were there and said something, I would respect you as a man. I said, Pat, you're out of order. Exactly. You never well, open you know, your mouth. There's that story that Frank made a call about Cohn and uh, the person at the other end of the Said Frank, find a dentist. Yeah. You can't, you know, hey, they, they, look, they, there's an undercurrent and there's an undercurrent. They let him go so far, but when they, they try to turn it, them each against each other, no way, too much money involved. Well, there were a lot of performers that were into gambling. Did a lot of guys get hooked? Oh, and, sure. Fats Domino, Fats Domino would be at the dice table, have his Kino right at here, and be pulling a slot machine. And you know why a lot of them lasted five, six years there? Because they owed the, they, they owed the hotel. They had to bring him back. I mean, the Harry James was a tremendous keynote player. I understand his story. Harry was up in his room, two o'clock in the morning. I said, Harry, you just won 25 grand. He said, bring it up. He says, no, now you only owe 32,000. You know, did you talk about, I mean, Donald O'Connor, I understand, was a big roller. Well, the, one thing <clears throat> I, the one thing I didn't find out in all the research he did on Jerry Lewis, I never found out about the gambling, and he was the biggest. Yeah, but you know, a lot of them are very closet gamblers. You know, a lot of them, they go on a corner, they, they have a certain slot machine, they'll stay there for hours, and nobody knows it, they mind their business. But you see, when you're in your, like, see, Shecky, the whole world knew that Shecky gambled, the whole world knew that all these guys, they were that loud. When, when, you know, when Frank went there, see, that's part of his ambiance, being by the poker table, and being by the, the blackjack table, Dean, wait, Dean, dump me the cards, that was all that. But these other guys, they were serious gamblers, big money. You're talking 100, 200 thousand dollars, like nothing. I mean, what's her name? The uh, the uh, the girl was with the Pips Gladys Knight. Uh, you know her book. She tells her she was a degenerate gambler. She'd blow everything. I mean, I understand Paul Anka was a fifty, sixty thousand dollar player. So, you know, but uh, which is okay. They want to do that fine. But don't cry. Don't cry. You think any of <clears> the guys <throat> in the Rat Pack were gamblers? Yeah, I think Peter Lawford was. I think uh, I don't think Dean was. Uh, that much, I think uh, Sammy was, and I think Frank was. See, Frank don't want to put, see, when Frank lost, he didn't want to pay. But when he won, he wanted the money, which is okay, right, Frank? Got a way to go. That's the way he did it. That's why I think he got belted in the jaw, you know, he lost the tooth. The guy says, you got to pay, <laughs> it's the pay-up time. <laughs> I love these guys, that's the truth. I used to see the guy in Philly, he said exactly yeah. the same thing. They didn't want to play with Frank anymore because he wouldn't pay. 
No. That's the way to win. That's why, uh, yeah, that's why he's got money today. <laughs> he never paid. That's the old way. But he was very generous with tipping. One thing I'll tell you about him. He tried 100 here, 200 there, 300 there. You know, that's okay. What was, why do you say Lawford was a gambler? What was Lawford like? Well, Nobody knows what he was like. Did you Lawford know? wanted to be Italian so bad he could have tasted it. Lawford wanted to be Italian. See, Joey, no. Joey was Jewish heritage. Joey was the, you know, I'm the Jew amongst the, the, the that's, and I love Joey for that, though. But he wanted to be Italian. A lot of, I think, I think Sammy would love to be Italian, just to be closer to Frankie, you know. He'd love to be Italian. So, but see, he was uh, the, the white bread. You had four guys, and then you had Peter Lawford. But yet again, that one peg fit in Brett beautifully. If it was anybody else but Peter Lovett, that thing might not work. It just happened. That's the way life is. That's the way it worked. But when he stepped out of that thing, it was over. I mean, you know, he did good news. He sang a couple of songs. Good-looking guy, you know. And he was, hey, listen, when, when, he, when he was in rehab, he was, he was shipping in things. He was sniffing in rehab. I mean, I read a story that his wife, I mean, so. Uh, he was spiraling down. Gave up. I think he gave up. I think after that was over, no one, and the Kennedy thing, and Frank didn't talk to him, and. You see, when you make a man like anyone, Frank or anybody, take over your life, you deserve to die. You deserve to leave this world. How can you make anybody tell you that? Who the hell are you? I wouldn't let nobody tell me that. So in other words, Frank, you don't like me no more, I'm gonna die? Are you kidding me? I'll go out of my way to be better. But these guys, they don't, they are, they're pussies. They all come on tough, tough, those are Frank's and they go out and they wanna take a pill, I wanna kill myself. Hey, you don't have to call up and say you're gonna kill yourself. You get a nice rigatoni, put some poison in it, eat the rigatoni and die. You don't have to throw yourself off the building and make a big splash. Nobody gives a damn. You're dead. But these guys go, well, Frank, that damn thing, I'm going to die. Die. I would tell you, die. Go ahead. Goodbye. What are you calling me up for? But they, you know, they think they're going to hurt him. You think Frank also? Go, 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 go. What Next. was the story you told me Jimmy <clears throat> Leonard said when Frank Jr. Frank, Frank Sinatra Jr. son was kidnapped. No, Frank Sinatra's son. You said Frank Sinatra Jr. I mean, kidnapped. I'm sorry. Frank Sinatra son, Frank Jr. was kidnapped. The day that they caught him, that, that they caught the, 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 the kidnappers, and they released Frank Sinatra Jr., Fat Jackie Leonard said the reason they, enlisted, they, they, they released Frank Sinatra Jr. is because he started to sing in the trunk. And I tell you, the place screamed when he said that. Frank Sinatra screamed when he said that. They let the kid go because he started to sing. Now, and the kid, and I worked with Frank Sinatra Jr., said that was the funniest thing. He said it was, it was hilarious. And that's another thing that's quiet. Nobody really knows that story, and that's a whole mishmash. Why do you care? You're going to kidnap Frank Sinatra's kid. You're going to be in your mind. Everybody who loves Sinatra want to kill you. They get a nice guy, a wealthy guy. Nobody had heard about him. He's up in a mountain somewhere. You, 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 you kidnap him, but no, they got to get a high-profile kind of a guy. You, was the, was the kid, you think the kidding was, was good-natured about Frank Jr.? Who? You think the kidding? The kidding? Did? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. You know, I work with Frank Jr. He said, you know something? He's a very fine gentleman. I got to tell you this. I was so impressed. It's Mr. Sir, and, and I mean a gentleman. And I think it's tough to carry that load that your father's Frank Sinatra. And they, 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 they naturally want to compare him with the father. And he's not a bad singer, this guy. If you give him a chance, let him sing. He's not a bad singer. He's not a personable guy because that's his, I, think he's I think he's afraid to take his shirt off and show the hair on his chest. What the I, hell think, is I think it's pretty remarkable that of all of them, <clears throat> the only one that had the kids that even dared to step out was Frank. But you know something? This guy's a fine musician. Yeah, I bet he is. Very fine. Is. When he conducts his father, he reads music. This is a brilliant young man. Sonny King told me that he gave every one of Dean's daughters away in marriage because Dean never made it to the wedding. Is that a fact? I know Sonny very well. He never told me that story. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, isn't it amazing? May I, may I make a statement here? Yeah. Do you know that I don't think Dean ever helped anybody? Put out a helping hand, say, you know, I'm a big star now. Come here, let me. I, I, I don't see that. I don't see that. Do you know Frank Sinatra never helped an Italian? Do you know what offended me when he made duets? I went on radio and I says, Frank, why not make a record? Frank Sinatra sings with his paisans. What a wonderful, wonderful legacy. What the hell is wrong with you? What are you doing with Julio, Julio, Julio? Who the hell he is about Julio? He's a hummer. What about you and Vic Damone and Connie Francis and Perry Como? Just for, the, just for the Italian culture. Too close. No. That's why he doesn't want to be around Frankie Avalon or any of those Why didn't he turn around and make a recording of when he sang with Pavarotti at Radio City? He stopped that. He didn't want that to be, to be filmed. That's, a, that, that's, a, that's, that's wonderful. What the hell is wrong with you? What are you trying to say? You're punishing us so you die, we, we couldn't see you with Pavarotti? That I must have been a wonderful... Too competitive. 
then why work with him? Why even start? And I guarantee you, somewhere, somewhere, somebody made a sneak, a sneak thing of that thing. Because you're right about the ego, because Sonny's friend, uh, what's his face, the little guy that used to be the uh, MC, um, oh, what was that guy's name? Joey Stevens. Yeah. When he worked at the 500 as the MC, he told me that even with Dean, if Dean would stay on too long, Frank would start pacing and say, yeah. what is the street singer doing out there? So mm -hmm. Frank wanted yeah. that song. Absolutely. That's enough. He's and the he king. he hated it. If Sammy would stay on too long, they'd say, he'd say, get him off. But again, I'm going to repeat what I said to you. If Dean would all the, and I loved him, Dean Martin, never said, let me help Joey and Frank and Sal and Nick. Never, nobody helps. So let me bring you... I made it. Now it's my turn to give somebody else a shot. They, they, I don't know why. I could never understand it. I never I saw. Don't think many of them do. Where well, do Sammy, you Sammy was what was discovered by Frank. Now Sammy should have turned around and said, "Let me discover her. Let me, let me do something." They never did. And I can never. You know, I don't I'm, even uh, think Jerry ever did. Jerry always claims to. Well, I, well, well, Jerry, Jerry, you know, has a tremendous ego and a genius, and I'll say that again. But Jerry was Jerry. Jerry don't share nothing with nobody. Jerry would turn around and you know, and 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 and, and watch a train go around a track, and bet you a billion to one dollar he'd make that train stop right in front of his finger. That's the kind of thing they were. That's press a button, computer, every even man, man, brilliant. But I don't think he enjoyed a minute of his brilliance. That's another thing. I don't think he stepped back and looked at the mirror and said, wait a minute, I'm Jerry Lewis, what did I do? Sit there and say, I want to just see what I did through my life. He cried to see how lucky and how fortunate he is. Cry. Because that talent was, 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 was given a chance for the American people in the world to see him. Big in France, I mean, an international star. You know, and that telethon, that telethon, I mean, hey, if you hate Jerry Lewis, the billion he raised for these people, you got to kiss his feet. And I adore him for that, I really do. With and all that's the, sincere. Oh, I know what he is. That's true. Oh. I checked him out. He never took a penny. No, and I, 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 I tell everybody, I said, well, and he's been accused. for them to spread that rumor about well, it. Well, do you know why? You always have that out there. You always have that out there. You're going to have somebody hate your guts anyway. You can be, my, you know, Mother Cabrini and come down and bless the world. Somebody going to say she's a phony. You got to, you, you, you have to expect that. Is there a Rat Pack joke? Do you have a Rat Pack joke? Did you ever do a joke about it? No. You never do, you ever do I a never joke? told a joke on a stage. I never did. I didn't like jokes. Because the joke is old. I like to do, see, I like to tell, like, like tell you, when this is not rehearsed, I'm you're talking, and, and, and I have that kind of ability to talk and say, oh, and if something comes out funny, fine. If not, see, I say things serious, but they're funny. People, if I say steps outside, I want to beat you up, they start to laugh. Nobody believes me. Nobody believes me. My wife says, one day somebody going to take you outside. I said, when I get outside, I'll say, come on, step inside. It's too cold out here. You know, nobody believes me. I yell and scream. They go, gee, he's a, yeah. It's, it's, it's me, it's the way I express myself. I'm not a tough guy, I don't wanna beat up nobody. Yeah. But it's, it's very much almost like the way Lenny Bruce was. Nothing yeah. was ever well, Lenny, I saw Lenny here at the Black Orchid. The best. Yeah, it was, it was, he was unbelievable. Today, 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 uh, these guys think they're close, they don't, they don't have a clue. This guy was a, 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 an innovator and had to go to jail for it. And now you hear some of these things these guys are doing today and they say, wow, genius. They don't have a clue. This guy was a, a bricklay of comedy. Yeah, and now these kids today, they go, Lenny who? Right, and yeah. Joan Rivers claiming how much she knew him. Joan Rivers is a yenta. Her daughter's a yenta. Everything about Joan Rivers is a yenta. She's the worst, she's the worst thing I've ever, 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 ever worked with. Ever worked with. She has no love in her heart. And remember this, when your husband commits suicide in Philadelphia, he don't even want to come near you to die. What does that tell you about you? And I'm telling you that's the truth because, uh, uh, what's it, Egbert, Egbert, whatever, uh, uh, whatever his name was, I met him, he was a fine gentleman, and he went to Philadelphia. Nobody wants to die in Philadelphia. That's how he really got to her. He said, I'm not going to die, I'm going to die in the worst city in the world, maybe, Philadelphia, and he died. You know. Well, yeah. you know, what, what the, what's a WC field say? I'd rather be dead than, 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 than Philadelphia, so that's it. But can you imagine now, this is that guy, he, we loved each other, he goes to Philadelphia. That's the end of that. If she didn't get the message, forget about it. And her daughter's becoming just like her. Oh. No talent. She's on the E channel, no talent. And, and you know something, I'm, I'm not saying this here behind her, I've said it to her, I've made a comic book about her, what I thought about her. She, she, you know, she knocked everybody's brains out, and then she's knocking out that G9 car, but she's calling her a pig. She's nuts, she's nuts. But you know something? She went to the gay community, not because she cares about them, she wants the gay community to support her. See, she goes where she can get support. She's got nothing but money, don't go for a quarter, and walks around like she's a socialite. She's a socialite, she's, she couldn't be a Jewish butcher. That's my opinion of her, so don't stop me with her. I got a lot of guns. Is that it? Yeah, we're out.